The second Lifetime Achievement Award we'll be presenting tonight is the Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters. Previous winners of this award include the great Toni Morrison, Stephen King, Isabel Allende, and Gwendolyn Brooks. This honor is given to a writer who has, over the course of their career, greatly enriched our literary heritage through their body of work. Tonight's honoree and his books have had an extraordinary impact, and here to present the medal is Edwige Danticat. Edwige Danticat is the author of four works of fiction, including Crick Crack, a National Book Award finalist, and Everything Inside, a National Book Critics Circle finalist. She has written seven books for young readers, thank you, her memoir, Brother, I'm Dying, which is my favorite, was a National Book Award finalist and won the National Book Critics Circle Award for Autobiography. She is a 2009 MacArthur Fellow, winner of the 2018 Neustadt International Prize for Literature, two-time winner of the Story Prize, and is the winner of the 2020 Vilcek Prize in Literature. With great, great, great pleasure, I'd like to welcome one of my heroes, Edwige Danticat. Good evening. The first time I saw someone receive the National Book Foundation Award for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters was 26 years ago in 1994, when tonight's recipient, Walter Mosley, presented the same award to the poet Gwendolyn Brooks. The Miss Brooks was very relaxed and had a lot of fun. Some of us felt the communal weight of this award somewhat akin to what I feel tonight. The job of the writer, Walter once said, is to take a close and uncomfortable look at the world they inhabit, the world we all inhabit. And the job of the novel is to make the corpse stink. Walter has been looking closely and intimately at our world for the past 30 years, starting with the publication of his groundbreaking first novel, Devil in a Blue Dress, to his most recent powerful short story collection, The Awkward Black Man. He has published 60 books, ranging from the haunting blues novel, R.L.'s Dream, to the existential thriller, The Men in My Basement, and The Last Days, Apotlamy Gray, a beautiful meditation on aging and dying. Ever curious, Walter is always in search of new ground, be it the ins and outs of his beloved Los Angeles or his views on capitalism and race and his political monographs. His explorations of different genres and streams of thought, be they his Grammy award-winning liner notes, his science fiction or his plays are often referred to as departures for him but every new Walter Mosley work is a departure as well as a home homecoming. A homecoming filled with sages and sinners who take us straight to the edge and back with, if we are lucky, a stop at the crossroads. These journeys embrace in all their complexities and frailties, Walter's black male heroes, who much like his neighborhood philosopher, Socrates Fartlow, are strong enough to kill with their bare hands and gentle enough to routinely braid a little girl's hair. His characters constantly question the status quo, all while demanding urgent answers of both the world and themselves. And sometimes they carry the weight of all our tales. With influences ranging from Faust and Shakespeare to Gwendolyn Brooks and Langston Hughes, Walter's work digs deeply into not only the world we inhabit, but the imminent world we might hope for, all that we are and all that we are becoming. Walter's contribution to American letters extends beyond his own pages. In 1998, he helped create the publishing certificate program at his alma mater, the City College of New York, with the goal of training more people of color to work in publishing. In the past 22 years, the program has graduated over 250 students who have gone on to work in publishing as editors, designers, or publicists. 
Fiction is one of the few constructive human activities we have to make something from almost nothing. Walter wrote in Elements of Fiction, one of two books of writing advice he has written. Something from nothing, he says, that kind of alchemy is a receipt for failure and also the hope for the miraculous. Tonight, in spite of these years of many challenges and horrors, we dare to celebrate the miraculous. It is my honor to introduce the winner of this year's National Book Foundation's Award for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters, Walter Mosley. Thank you so much for that, Edwige. It was really, it was really wonderful, and I'm really happy. Uh, I'm just really happy. And also, I'm deeply grateful to receive the Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters. Just to start it out, I'd like to thank a few important people. John Edgar Wideman, Ishmael Reed, Charles Johnson, David Bradley, Ed Bullen, Samuel R. Delaney, Cornelius Eady, Percival Everett, Yusef Kumanyaka, Haki Matabuti, Nathan McCall, Michael Harper, E. Ethelbert Miller, Ralph Ellison, Randall Keenan, Amiri Baraka, Sterling Plump, Kalamu Yasalam, Iceberg Slim, Stanley Crouch, Quincy Troop, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Frank X. Walker. These are just a few names among my peers who are either alive now or have lived at some point during this medal's existence. Without them and so many others, I could not be here today. It is a great honor to be given this recognition. It has been more than 30 years since I embarked on the path that writing conjures out of almost nothing, a path wrought in the mind, a mind that is too small to contain the full scope of a project that is endless and has within it, like language itself, the full experience of our species. I love writing. It's slippery slopes and foolish errands, it's silly puns and bone-shaking metaphors. It's ability to offer over the millennia the deep well of human invention in defiance of despots, wars, poverty, and ever encroaching techno battle. Stories can be transmitted via fire optics, but, but they have yet to be surpassed by that or any other medium. Stories keep their deep connection to the human heart word by word, sentence by sentence. We, my fellow writers and I, and our readers talk about love and solitude, dreaming and reality, and truths that might not ever be uttered except by the word in the book that we read, that we write, that we interpret. We writers speak to our readers, but at the same time they receive our stories, applying them to their own unique experience. In this way, writing is political and democratic in the extreme. We are free in our minds to imagine, to conjure anything, anything at all. This, I suppose, brings me back to the beginning. There's a great weight hanging over the reception of an award when the underlying subject is the first black man to receive. We, the people who are darker than blue, have been here on this continent in this storm for 400 years. As a matter of course, we have been chained, beaten, raped, murdered, robbed of our names, our history, and often even our dignity. This has been an ongoing process, an unending anguish. And so one might be cowed by the monumental negative space surrounding that pinprick of light that this award represents. One might ask, can such a thing make a difference? Is this a dying gasp or a first breath? Is today different from any other day over the past 400 years? I prefer to believe that we are on the threshold of a new day, that this evening is but one of 10,000 steps being taken to recognize the potential of this nation. We, the people who are darker than blue, built this nation brick by brick. We crafted its jazz and bled for its yet to be realized beliefs. These achievements cannot be ignored. We've been here from the beginning and will be here at the end. Our heads held high when the promise of equality is achieved. Thank you for giving me the recognition of what, for what has gone before and the chance to utter a few of the truths that we all strive for. Thank you.